So with that, let's talk about self-running enterprises. What, does it, what, what do self-running enterprises mean? Well, what we are talking about is, we are talking about autonomous supply chains within which there are autonomous organizations that are able to perform end-to-end -end activities of the entire supply chain without any human supervision or with minimal human intervention. That's what uh, an autonomous or a self-running enterprise or a self-running uh, supply chain is. There are four key components to it or four technologies that are the pillars of something like this. So that's uh, IoT, which is Internet of Things. Those are basically the sensors that sense some sort of a parameter in the environment. They could be sensing inventory levels or temperature of the products or um, you know, status of shipment, all those sorts of things. And in real time, they would be transmitting that data to the algorithm. Blockchain is the decentralized ledger that allows us to store data, uh, conduct financial uh, transactions with transparency and with compliance and so on. AI algorithms are obviously the algorithms that are able to take all sorts of different data. They are able to you know, generate insights basically from it. And then robotics is obviously the physical arm of artificial intelligence. Let's understand this using an example. Let's say at your home, your heating isn't working or it's not on yet. And so you're at home feeling a little chilly, so you go on your online shopping platform and you start searching for electric heaters. You know what? I'm going to order an electric heater and, well, it's going to warm up my place. As you're going through all of these electric heater options on your online shopping platform, you see this ad. This ad, personalized ad, is for a fall jacket. You're like, hmm, it's fall, it's getting a little chilly, I have this event to go to, maybe I should check out this jacket. Ooh, I like the color too. All right, so you order the jacket and it reaches your home the next day. This process where you got this personalized ad and this, uh, this jacket that was delivered to your doorstep the next day, a lot happened in the background for this to take place. So the first thing is, weeks in advance or even months in advance, the AI algorithms that are sitting in the cloud based on all of the historical data plus market trends plus the environment, whatever data they can have access to, and they are making all sorts of predictions like demand or how much material is required or how, how should resource allocation happens and those sorts of things. And then based on that, they are making decisions like, okay, we need X material. So through blockchain, create this smart contract, send it to the supplier. Once the material comes in, the robots take it in and the payment is made. It would have done all of the production scheduling, resource allocation, so, and then using robotics, the, uh, the jacket would have been manufactured, assembled, packaged, then robots would have taken those packages, put them in, let's say, self-running automobiles, trucks, autonomous trucks. Those trucks would take it to the distribution center. Other robots would take them down. They would put them in aisles. So that when you get that personalized ad and you buy uh, that jacket, the AI in the cloud is like, aha, I was right about my prediction. Well, not exactly that way, obviously. So it sends that notice to the warehouse. The robots go, they grab that jacket from the right aisle, the right color, the right size. They put it on the delivery truck. And let's be creative. Let's say that autonomous delivery truck goes to this central delivery location from, these, from that the truck. Now these robotic drones grab those packages. They fly to different customers. One of them is you. And they drop that package to your doorstep. Everything that I described in this process already exists. The only difference is it does not exist end to end. All of these technologies exist. All of these technologies work, work together. There are hundreds and hundreds of use cases just in silos and in different parts of the supply chain. They just don't exist end to end yet. Now, I picked the supply chain example because that's a little bit more complicated because there is, there is physical work involved. You know, raw material has to come and things have to be manufactured and, and stuff has to be transported and shipped and so on and so forth. If we, we could apply this model to pretty much any industry, knowledge-based industry, marketing, or something creative, or software programming. In those types of industries, it's obviously much easier to apply this model because there is a lot less 
physical movement that is happening. So, well then the question is, why don't we have something like that already? And the answer is there are a few reasons for it. One of the reasons is that when you scale something that complicated and that autonomous to this level, a lot of things break. A lot of practice, a lot of work, a lot of effort has to go, which takes time to make it perfect. But then there are other issues too. There are other issues around cybersecurity, for example, that still need to be solved. There are issues around human capital that still need to be solved. The amount of energy that they consume is just, it's insane. There are issues around ethics. All of those things need to be solved because before this becomes a complete reality. But since all of the pieces and all of the technologies already exist, it isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It is coming. It's going to happen.